So Doug Eggleston. All right. So we're, when we left off, uh, we had just met surfing. I think he took me home to ask his girlfriend if we could stay for the night on their couch. Uh, he and I. So we got back to his place. Met her, Stacy, one of the most beautiful people on the planet. Very, very nice, uh, kind-hearted, beautiful girl. Uh, inside and out, just amazing people. And her and Doug were amazing. You just, you know, that that cool couple that just. Doug Doug took me in Dogma, and I don't know if anybody remembers it. Kevin Smith Dogma with uh, Buddy Jesus, but uh, oh, it was good. And it was good watching with him because he was a smart dude. Um, I remember him telling me a story one time about how he got to use the word magnanimous in a sentence. Uh, because <laughs> some guy at, uh, I think it was the juries or something, uh, used to be a restaurant there in Cocoa Beach, right there at a pretty good surf break, uh, that he and I used to frequent. So, <clears throat> so we stay the night, go surfing, have a blast, catch a bunch of waves, stay the night, and we just, like, start chatting and talking and just like he's on the same path that I am you know he's he wants to he's trying to get back into pararescue because he um had went to be a combat controller then when he decided to be a PJ again he came back and he had gotten hurt and um so he's he's on the road back to pararescue you know and I'm like oh you know and I just gone through it and uh so every weekend as soon as I got released Hopped in the car, drove my car down to Cocoa Beach, got there uh, late, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12, whatever. Um, went to sleep, woke up in the morning, he and I went and caught Dawn Patrol, a bunch of waves. Uh, beautiful, beautiful times. Um, you know, I remember talking to him before I, my first deployment. And uh, this, this is a pretty funny story between Doug and I that not many people know, but. So this is. Uh, I've known him for a couple of years, and I'm like, dude, I need I need to talk to you about something. He's like, what? He's like, or I'm like, <clears throat> I'm like, I, dude, I like love you. Like you were like very important to me. You, I've never met somebody like as cool as you, smart as you. You know, he was a couple of years older than me, but like he just he had it all together. You know, and. Uh, and he, he's like, uh, are you going to tell me you're gay? And I'm like, no, man, I love you. Like, you know, like, love, like, uh. And he's like, I don't know, me too. <laughs> you know, and he, he's like, shut up, don't talk about it. You know, it's, um, but I mean, that was, he was a good, good dude. I mean, you know, it's, it's hard for men to sometimes talk about how they love each other. But, um, you can have non-gay man love. I mean, there's nothing wrong with loving a man just like loving a woman. Uh, everybody's beautiful in their own way. And when you've uh, sweat, bled, almost died with, you know, and maybe shed some tears with people, uh, you that's closer than blood. I mean, that's, those guys are brothers, you know. So uh, Doug was that ilk of a good guy, that kind of a person, you know, and so he and I surf, have a good time, he finally gets back in, uh, gets all his waivers approved, gets to go be a PJ, um, goes through with Ivan Rodriguez, a uh, good friend of mine, and Doug mentors Ivan as well, uh, and I mean, this guy was smart. They're, we need more mentors in the world, more people willing to talk to somebody, take the time to help uh, a young person out and be like, hey, uh, all right, you know, that could work. Or, you know, maybe this, you know, or maybe just someone to listen, hey, you know, I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about that. Like, that's sitting out in the lineup waiting for waves sometimes uh, in Cocoa Beach. You can, you can go kind of crazy sometimes waiting on a set. And so we'd have all this time to talk. And... You know, I, I didn't realize what he was doing at the time, but um, now I realize, you know, he was helping me, he was shaping me, mentoring me. Um, 
So, you know, Doug cared about more than just himself. He cared about the world. He cared about his Air Force. He cared about pararescue. Um, I mean, the dude lent me two surfboards for, like, the longest time. This uh, about for two weeks when I was a student. You know, he didn't know me. Uh, didn't know anything about me, but, he, you know, surfer, dude, seemed cool. Okay. And, and that's what I try to do. You know, I, I loan out all my boards. A couple of them got broken, but uh, in the long run, I, I think a lot of other people have gotten to go surfing because I shared my boards. Because I, I mean, I used to share boards before, but like it really got as an idea after Doug that like, you know, share everything. So, um, <clears throat> Doug gets to be a PJ and he's doing good stuff and, you know, I get to work with him and, um, December 7th, 2001, he's on a mission in, um, in the Bermuda Triangle, and, uh, they're, they're doing a, they'd already rescued the guy, um, they're doing a little training, and he gets thrown from the boat, and ends up underneath the boat, and dies, and th this was, a uh, th this was a really good, good dude, um, like his loss, uh, I, I believe is still felt, because uh, the wealth of knowledge, the, the, the way he handled things, um, just, you can't reproduce that, and, and it hurt, it hurt really bad, I was, um, I didn't get to make his funeral, because I was on my honeymoon, uh, but I, tickets were bought, and we were in Hawaii, and it was just, it wasn't what I wanted, and so I never got to say goodbye, I mean, eh, maybe sometimes you don't need to say goodbye, you know, if somebody, if, if you still think about them, and you still talk about them, and you still remember them, they're not really dead, you know, as long as their memory survives, so that's what I do, like, I try to keep Doug alive, and Mike Maltz, and Mike Flores, and Armin Sarai, uh, John Brown, people that were really good friends of mine, and that I had some very, very good times with, and am a better person for having met them, and, um, so yeah, I just, trying to make the world a little bit better place, and if I can tell stories about my friends, and you get to learn about them, and hear about them, say, yeah, that's pretty good, you know, I give you a little motivation, then, you know, then that's good, so, um, I guess that's the end of my story, Doug, I'm sure there, there's more stories, but the, the, the basic story of, of Doug Eggleston, uh, pararescuing, Texan, and just all around you, fucking dude.